Well, there it is. Two sinkholes of celery. Oh, well, and one big celery root there, celery ack. Anyway, I got to figure out how to weigh this stuff. So wish me luck. I'll come back and tell you how much it weighed. So that is one celery and it's three pounds, 12 ounces. So pretty darn close to four pounds. And I haven't um, measured how long it is yet, but I'd say a couple of feet anyway. Not as big as Jandera uh, or Jer Garowen at Jandera. Uh, not quite as big as hers. She had some 43 inch celery I think but that makes me pretty happy <laughs> that is a lot of celery and that's just one of them there's still there's all that over there too that needs to be weighed but I wanted to weigh this one by itself so that's exciting <laughs> okay so here we are with all our celery and it's a lot. <laughs> I haven't added up all the grams yet. I had to weigh it in batches, so I still don't know a total amount. I know that the one big one was like over three and a half pounds. It was three pounds and 12 ounces, so that's pretty cool. Anyway, one of the things I'm gonna do to preserve this is I have in the past dried the leaves, but what I'm gonna do this time is they're all going into gallon-sized freezer bags into the freezer, and then I will use them for flavoring broth um, through the winter. So I have four bags of leaves already, and I still have a few more to process, plus I haven't even touched the celery yak yet. But, Let's take a look at what I'm going to do next. So next I'm going to take some of the actual celery itself and I'm quite happy with, you know, the size of some of my celery chunks. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. And so I'm going to dehydrate a bunch of those and store those up for the summer. And then of course for the winter. <sighs> <laughs> My seasons are all backwards. Cut these into chunks and then I'm going to whiz them through the uh, food processor a couple of times. I'm just going to pulse them a couple of times to break them up and chop them up. And that ought to do it. I don't want them to be too small or mushy or anything. But yeah, that's what we're doing next. So I've never actually tried celery at before, so let's give it a try. I wonder if my dentures will actually go through it. Hmm. It doesn't really have much flavor. Uh, a little bit. I guess a very, very mild, mild celery flavor. Good though. <laughs> so this is what my celery act looks like all ground up and it's gonna go into the pan here with the onion and the celery and I'm gonna get a clove of garlic in here and some salt and pepper and this isn't actually going to be a cream of celery soup it's going to be a celery soup base so it's going to have everything but the cream or the thickener in it uh, that way it's safe to can and that's what I'm going to do with it, is can this so that I have a nice celery-based soup base that I can then heat up and add cream to or whatever I want to do. So these beautiful pieces of celery, ooh, that one's not so beautiful. I might have to cut some stuff off of that. Anyway, these are just going to get wrapped in tin foil and put in the fridge and we'll either eat them fresh or I am going to be making stuffing because Thanksgiving is on Monday here in Canada. 
And the final thing that I'm doing with this celery today is I am making a celery soup base. So it's not going to be a cream of celery soup yet. You don't want to put cream into it. However, the recipe that I found for canning it does add some finely diced tomato. So I have in there my celery and my celeriac root and my, what else do I have in there? An onion and a couple of cloves of garlic. And I'm going to throw this nicely diced potato in there. <laughs> of course I can't do it with one hand. Oh, what a mess. Lori. Anyway. <laughs> We'll give that a stir. It's pretty plain colored, but of course it is a celery soup base. So uh, we're gonna let that cook for a minute or two. And then I'm gonna throw in this broth and some salt and pepper. And I think that's really it. I did find this recipe. Where did I find it? I have no idea, but I searched for how to can um, how to can celery soup, and it's a celery soup base, not an actual celery soup. Processing in the pressure canner for 40 minutes, uh, and it makes four pints, which is about eight cups. So, yeah, and it explains everything step by step. And the only thing, it calls for white wine. Um, I do have some, but gosh, it's not even opened, and I'm certainly not going to drink a bottle of white wine and nobody else here drinks wine either so I hate to open it just for one so I'll probably just use uh, my stock this calls for one quart I may add a little more we'll see <laughs> anyway I think the potato is uh, from the starch is going to thicken it up because what I am going to do is this just calls for it to simmer for five minutes but I'm actually going to let it slow cook overnight and and then in the morning I will can it um, yeah I don't know where I was going with that but yeah in the morning I will can it uh, and then we'll go from there It absolutely does. Those potatoes um, have started to thicken it up already. So ah, I'm gonna go ahead and get, uh, this isn't quite four cups, but get that in there and then go and get some more. So that's what we're doing. It's making some soup. So here is my beautiful soup. And all I did was just run my little hand blender in it. You can do it in a blender if you want to. But let's give it a taste. It has no cream in it at all. It's really, really, really good. Mm. And now I'm going to can it. <laughs> what do you think, Ma? Ma, I get you to taste things just because I want you to know your opinion? No, you're a YouTube star, and I'm going to ah. use you. <laughs> is this your very own slurry? Yeah, and look how creamy it is, it even is. without any cream in it. It has no milk, no cream, no dairy. What did you put in it? Uh, I added a potato diced up. Okay. Um, and then it's just celery and broth. Celery and celeriac and broth and... Flavoring. Does it have any onion in it? Yes. Yes. It does have onion. Because I thought I saw a little piece of onion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Onion and garlic and celery. Hmm. Tastes like celery. Right? Yeah. <laughs> it's really good. It is good. <laughs> you did well. Thank you. Do you want to taste? No. That didn't even sound good. What do you mean it doesn't sound good? It's delicious. Oh, God. <laughs> Come on. Okay, now you have to taste it. That looks like mud. It does not look like <laughs> mud. It does look like mud. It looks like soup. It looks like something out there in the street. <laughs> doesn't it? What, like a mud puddle? Yeah. <laughs> Let 
Looks like we used all the cat food. No. Nope. No, you don't like it? No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Whoa. You no. don't like celery soup? No. Oh. You don't like celery? I like celery, but not, no. You don't like it? Go ahead, Sharon. She I tried it already. And you like it? It's pretty good for celery soup. I liked it. Okay. <laughs> well, I guess you can't make everybody happy, can you? <laughs> I like it, and Mom likes it, and you know what? If I cook with it, he won't even know. <laughs> if I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times. Do not take your canning advice from me. Always check and find your own safe recipes and follow the instructions on your own canner. That's the only way you can be sure you're safe, and so that is what I always recommend you do. If I find any answers, so it said one inch of headspace. The recipe that I found said one inch of headspace and process for 40 minutes. Oh, I better double check that. It might have been 40. No, I'm pretty sure it was 40, but I will double check that to make sure that it was 40 and not 45. So this is a great, like the potato did make it nice and creamy. And as mom mentioned when she tried it, of course you saw Dave, <laughs> big whiner. Uh, who wouldn't even try it, chicken. Anyway, the potato did make it nice and creamy. Um, but you could definitely, if you wanted to, when you were reheating it, like on the, on the recipe I found, it said that when you reheated it, you could uh, throw in a little bit of cream or milk or whatever to make it creamier. Um, or you can just drink it. Drink it. <laughs> Eat it just like this. So like I said, you want to follow the instructions for your canner. Now I use this Nesco high pressure canner and I follow the instructions that it says. So I've got, I've got my cans in there. I'm going to add eight cups of hot water because everything is hot. If I was doing a cold or a raw pack, I would be doing, I would be doing cold water. It's important to follow your manufacturer instructions because they have gauged how much is going to be needed for it to reach the right pressure when you have this number of jars in there. So it's important that you follow your manufacturer instructions all the time. And this is what mine says is eight cups of water. Okay, so <laughs> I've added my eight cups of water and I'm going to close my lid and seal it. I'm going to make sure that this is set to exhaust. So yeah, anyway, all I'm gonna do is push high and I'm going to go to 40 minutes and I'm going to hit start. And now this is going to circulate and this is going to build up heat and it's going to build up pressure. Like I said, I want to make sure I've got that on exhaust. And once it has built up enough pressure and I have a steady stream of steam here, this will switch to my 10 minute countdown uh, to set the pressure. And that's really important that you leave that to set the pressure. So 10 minutes. And then we're going to do our countdown to 10 minutes at, at that pressure with our steam valve released. And then at the end of that 10 minutes, we're going to flip that to airtight and it will start processing. Good timing. I just walked in here. I just flipped to E10. So now we're counting down our exhaust time, uh, which apparently sets the pressure. And then when this reaches zero, I need to, and it'll beep again, I need to flip that to airtight, and then it will resume and start counting my time down. So when it hits E0, means it's counted down for 10 minutes, I'm gonna come up here and flip this to airtight. And now, That's going to build up its pressure again, and as soon as it does, 
it'll beep one more time and then my countdown will start. And there you have it. So just like your stovetop canner, you even though this is set to airtight, you will see steam and bubbling coming out here as it releases pressure as it needs to in order to maintain the pressure inside the canner so that that's what makes it safe. So uh, I'm going to come back when it's done. So it's going to time down for 40 minutes and then because it's pressure canning, you want to leave it for at least an hour before you even try to open the lid. So I'll be back in a couple of hours and we'll see if we get any pings. So once it turns to off, I can actually just reach over here and unplug it. And then I'm going to leave it for about an hour before I come back and actually take my jars out of it. So and there's my beautiful dehydrated celery. Quite happy with that. That was four trays full. Oh. <laughs> well, they're popping. Oh, there's number two. And you gotta be careful when you're taking them out to not tilt them. Because if you do tilt them, it can interfere with the seal. And that is just something that I'm learning. This is just my second season, I guess, of canning. I've probably canned, I don't know, a dozen or so times now. Uh, I never had anyone to teach me how to can. It's so, so sad. I've learned what I know by watching a lot of videos and reading a lot of books. And I do have a canning book. And I do look for safe recipes on online. And, and I did actually find one that said it could be canned and it had milk in it. But I figured I'd stick to what I know for sure is safe and that is canning it without cream and then adding the cream afterwards. But I'll tell you what, I had a bowl of it um, just the way it was and I thought it was good. <laughs> I don't care what Dave says. So that's probably the end of my um, celery adventure for this year. I do still have all of those leaves and stuff. I think I ended up with like five bags of those leaves. So that's going to make a lot of stock over the next year. And yeah, that's what we'll do with it. And anyway, thanks so much for hanging out. I'm sure this is going to be a fairly long video. So I really appreciate you hanging out to the very end. And oh, I'm beeping. <laughs> Oh, that's number three. I'm sorry, that's my timer for dinner. Uh, I wonder if we can get one more pop. We'll keep our fingers crossed. You take care of yourself. I will see you soon. Bye now. Mm -hmm.